Chances are, Francis is back, lean and mean, from the cosmic sausage machine. <laughs> However, I have a definite hunch. Barbara is giving him a free lunch. For all his hard sweat, for those who say, I just can't abide. Rose. <laughs> <laughs> a free lunch for all his hard sweat for those who say, I just can't abide prose. <laughs> <laughs> Writing all that poetry just for us. Okay. okay. <coughs> yeah. As I can see from the reaction to that, uh, we've got. Uh, <laughs> We're very near the limit for, for most of us Numborians. It's, uh, it's a bit like uh, picking out all the raisins from the cake until you get sick of the raisins. Then it's, uh, I remember when Joyce Bird used to be up here and she would be uh, saying, uh, if I ever try, would dare to read a bit of Francis's poetry or anybody else's, can't we get back to Barbara? <laughs> <laughs> no, can't we get back to Barbara? Can't we get back to Barbara? Yeah. Which, uh, it's, uh, where are those simple Barber stories? And the, the Barber's lovely sayings. Why all this stuff, of course? Well, <clears throat> Of course, as you had it explained this this week, and it's it's all uh, it's all transformative, even if it's just potentially so. And, and the extraordinary thing, of course, uh, apart from us thinking this is pretty good stuff, uh, the extraordinary thing is that Barber himself seems to have picked it as a major vehicle for the future of his work on the planet and uh, have given it his seal of, a, of approval uh, that it's going to be there <coughs> as a much needed vehicle uh, for the new culture that, uh, that Ross and others have been <coughs> saying we hope we, we see is starting to emerge. It's not going to be a, a matter of, of small isolated groups of uh, rednecks like us who are going to be keeping the flame alight, but it, it, it will be a transformation of world culture. You can see Barbara as a world avatar, the first real world avatar, and it's, there are all the signs are emerging in many, many different ways, not just those perennial philosophers, but uh, in in, in much of the enlightened tolerance and the turn t towards inward experience that is, is transforming the whole religious horizon at the moment. But at the, mo at the moment in Australia, of course, it, it's, uh, it's as if you started to, uh, to build a, a, a beautiful Gossamer Gothic Cathedral down there in the industrial area near Joanna's house. And people would be appalled and amazed and find it was completely out of date. People don't people don't go in for the beauty of the holy in any really constructive way in this extraordinarily secular <coughs> society which has very little of the idea of a vertical hierarchy to, towards the ineffable and invisible. Uh, the beauty might be 
able in concrete form, in verbal form, in, in painting form, to start revealing the things that are latent in the human soul. So the sunny coast has a, a way to go. <laughs> <laughs> what about Facebook? <laughs> That's working. <laughs> Facebook? I'm afraid I know nothing about Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> So, on with the poetry now. Poetry, of course, is, uh, is never easy. It, it's, it's full of unusual words, unusual word usages, ambiguities, complexities, <coughs> word play, plural pluralities of meaning. It therefore really suits talk about God. Because God doesn't try to reveal himself in transparent propositions and doctrines. You can see what a poet Baba was, how often Baba spoke in terms of, of metaphors, how enigmatic Baba's pronouncements often were, to say nothing of his, of his actions, how Baba made people work for themselves on knowing what to do and how they should do it. And Baba himself was, he was not the slave of language. Baba used language as a free agent communicating with other free agents. Any coming to terms with God talk involves an interpretive risk. It's an unavoidable aspect of ordinary human co communication. But it's all the greater when the speaker is the living God, when the subject is the living God, who's ways are not, to put it mildly, our ways. Who is communicating with we who dwell in thick darkness. So, this Complexity, this, this baited hook of language, comes in a poetic form. Of course, it, what we'd call prose, uh, Darwin Shaw's book, for example, or, or, or the prose writings that Don Stevens gives us, is, is uh, full of poetry from Bach. Uh, it, but Francis himself has chosen of course, to, re to reveal through order, through pattern and, and order and harmony and complexity, raising it to an, another notch in his writing about Baba from, from the ordinary prosaic one. We're facing here ingenious playing. I was struck this morning with John's talk which revealed directly and indirectly the freedom of, of the creative act. And it's, uh, this is, there's this sense of a 
of Leela, of play, of enjoying throwing the balls in the air and catching them again. That, that, that sense that one has of, of inspiration that's there in, in, in Francis's poem. His ability to make something new, to surprise us. We've been calling it an epic, but the label wasn't much use, I felt, was it? It, it, it's, it, it eludes. Any, there's no real point of comparison for Stay With God. It's, an, it's mainly initiating something very new, even though, as we said during the weekend, Francis is very concerned to be in touch with tradition, as, of course, was, was Barber, to keep the, ball, the, the beads on the string intact uh, and, and not to, uh, to, to treat them as if they were superseded toys for primitive people, inferior to us progressive people. So in playing intelligent games with words, keeping it natural and intelligible. Well, while I'm thinking of it, this... Oh, sorry. I, I left it that very moment. No, 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 no. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. It, okay. I, I just put it up here, but for Di or anybody else who, who wanted that email, mm. worldwisdom.com. Mm. It, it's a great place to, to start. It has very good essays and references to all the people who've written along perennial lines. Many of whom I've never heard of, but there's some minor con contributors and major ones. But the, the ones that I put here on the list are, are all reliable and authoritative people. So different. One of the great things is, is in, in Barber's age, there's, there's a synthesis of many different types of approach. Uh, and uh, so, and this, this one, Sayyid Jose Nasra, he's still alive in his 80s now, the most marvellous authority on esoteric Islam and, and the Shiite tradition, probably the most respected authority on on Islam there is in the world today who, who had to had to leave Iran at the time of the Iranian revolution but has had been sheltered in American academia ever since and has many wonderful uh, YouTube videos of, available and of course this bloke Martin Lings helped put me onto Shakespeare uh, he wrote a book on Shakespeare not, not quite as good as mine but it gave me a few good <laughs> ideas yeah. And this, uh, this, is the, this is the Aussie guy, Harry Old, Old Meadow. He's not on the same level as these other authorities, but he, fancy having him down there. He's had a lot of trouble down there at the Trove University. Because you can imagine what the university thinks of, uh, of people who are talking about this as the central iconography and, and, and presentation of the real in, in, uh, in the scholarly world. Uh, as, as Ross was saying, it, 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 you, you're really in danger if you, if you take that sort of viewpoint. There is, there's an unwritten dogmatism of to be intelligent, you, you must be systematically sceptical about anything like that. And, 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 and Jeff, and, can I ask something there by picking up on what both you and Ross had said? It's, Yes, in the scholarly world, God might be a dirty word, but are you just talking of the West? There's a big lot of scholarly world outside of the West. I think it's even worse elsewhere, isn't it? No, not in China. Not in China? I, I well, received uh, emails yeah. from three. <coughs> they were very high up, really the top. Africa, South from China, America, and then places they that really, actually, yeah. He said, Baba provides the key. We are professionals teaching, teaching Buddhism or mm. uh, professors of religion. Uh, so there are a few in China. Mm. But you, you <coughs> notice how even people very sympathetic to Baba, like Carl Ernst uh, or uh, William Chittick and so on, have to be very careful in what they publish and stick to the 
Can I totally agree with you about the rest, and I'm sort of asking about the rest. I, well, I, I, yeah, well, I may, maybe, maybe in places where the Sufism is strong, like Indonesia, or it, there are alternative traditions. Yeah. The whole well, the Islamic world, presumably, it's accepted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it, we might have been silenced, I think, by the Western well, they have their own the Western world. Mm. There are other traditions, and and, and all these, those first uh, two people, and, and this guy, and and uh, and Lins, all all contacted Sufis through the Al Azhar <coughs> University, founded in the 11th century in Cairo, and and full of of, of great Sufi teachers. And that's really how, how they they found an alternative tradition to to the secular. One. So there are, there are other other traditions. But how much in in days when there's so much fundamentalism around and and so much imitating of the Western secular model, I don't know how influential they are. In a very famous university, Zhejiang University. The professor who is that the president of Chinese Religion Association is an <coughs> expert on Ramakrishna. And he, he has a group of students translating Ramakrishna, Vivek Nanda. Mm -hmm. And Shandong University, which is one of the best, has an institute uh, studying Baha'i religion. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's happening. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Poetry then, trying to get away from the abstractions of, of didactic and tr truths, trying to get words to be as close as possible to living experience. Not just making simple things complex, as we were reminded that Baba said about philosophy, and which is so true, uh, but reflecting a, a, an organic complexity. Uh, a, a creative, free, intuitive complexity uh, that comes through in, in a long poem like this, you've got the, the room to do it. Francis, of course, a wonderful guy because the thing we've found all weekend is, is Francis writing true to his own poverty, <coughs> and, uh, to, to his own. To, to his openness, to his total dependence on, on Baba, on the perfect master. And France is honest enough to, to present conflict. Uh, of course, the, the very life of poetry comes out, out of a lot of... It gets a lot of energy from its conflicting positions on, on things. The anyway, it's time I stopped generalising too much, perhaps, and we moved on to poetry. So, page 19. The first page, of course. I'm just going to pause very briefly on these first pages because they're, uh, I just wanted to talk about the, the beat, the rhythm, the order of, of the po poetry. No, if we could just go down to the next stanza here. Yeah. Ignorant men, <clears throat> men of domestic culture, say that Jesus was the first bringer of love. Despicable is their doctrine, having it that before this, God was loveless. Now, there, if you, if you count it up, there are six beats to to each line. Now, not being, I hope I'm not striking you as dogmatic about this, and I'm not a, I'm not a brilliantly poetic person, but I'm, if, uh, what I found helpful was, helpful was if you're not sure how to be reading out loud a particular stanza of, of Francis, try and find a line in the stanza which is pretty obvious how many beats it will have. And then generally, you'll see that the other lines in the stanza will reinforce that and fit in with that. It's, the, the predominant one is a five-beat line, in, in, uh, but sometimes three beats, sometimes four beats, 
and here six beats, which is giving it a portentous quality, a, a strength, a dignity uh, to it, where, where he's, he's taking this, the standpoint of, of the epic narrator here. And other ignorant men have it that love is now sealed, that there is no further need of his descent and example. Love does not admit of a first or a last. God is never more nor less. All his bright messengers were nothing but love, and the essence of love, sun bright and wholly perfect. Even then I make mistakes when I'm doing it without my I've, I've been through about half the book, putting little pencil marks, some of which I then rub out and say, no, that's not right. Uh, because I like, I love the, the sound of it, and, and reading it out loud to Tiana or to, to whoever it is, is just so, so nice, getting that regular beat, which, which is conveying so, so much of the magic of, of, of the words. Okay, if we go over the page, down to experience, standard starting experience. Okay, the next page, 20. Yeah. Experience confirmed the import of both dreams when one day his mother found him playing with a snake. At seven years his interest was marbles and kite flying. At nine he was reading Hafiz. He schooled till nineteen years, when one evening as he was going home on his bike, an old woman rose up under a neem tree, called him and kissed him on the forehead, between the eyes, and initiated him into bliss. Nine months later, in one moment, in a flash, she made him know that he was God. And I think it's very naturally gone into a five-beat rhythm here. He's not dealing with the same weighted utterance that, that he was there at the beginning. And it seems to me that that five-beat thing then carries on through that section of through most of the of the first book and it you you can see how Francis is 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 using it to to make attractive what is a simple factual narrative and uh, he, he, he he very economical in, in the, the incidents that he chooses but he also, this beat is the magic behind it all. Okay, the next page, 27. Stands at the top of the page. Right jewel. Right Jewel. Your greatness is in your humiliation. Your sun glory is in your moon gentleness. From your suffering is born all singing, all singing. A ray, beloved, from the jewel of your pain. An arrow ray, a sudden rifle ray in the density called heart, that my soul, enwrapped in a shadow coat of your glory, may sing you and continue to unfold the story of your love. Francis, once more, working with this dynamic of contradictions, your greatness is in your 
humiliation. You have both the, the sun glory and the moon gentleness. Singing coming from the, the suffering. A ray, but not just a, a ray, a, a rifle ray with all the violence and impetuosity of, of that. Reminding us of the imagery of, of the arrows that occur so often. Not just Rama's arrow, but Krishna and, and the arrow that, that killed him. And, and so much a part of aiming for the target, finding the target. The target, of course, is always the God that dwells in the heart. The, the, that's the, the bullseye to, uh, to aim for. That's the, the target which has to be uncovered. Because it's enwrapped in a shadow coat of your glory. So that Francis can continue to unfold the story of your love, of your love. Then you can hear the difference between that sort of rhythm and two stanzas down. <clears throat> this gave our young dabbler and lives a terrible fright. There's no doubt it would have any usurer or manipulator of other or other human trafficker. If they had been told by an angel or anyone who could shine sufficiently brightly. So he asked the angel what he'd better do. The angel said, Luckily, I just got here in time. So and so's limbs are not yet unstrung, nor his soul shortened of experience. Go find Tilopa, who is the Jesus of this time. He can save you. We're not going to find historical veracity in, in Francis. Obviously, nobody said use Jesus' name in that time. Uh, it's, but it's Francis, of course, Surprising us, shocking us, reminding us. This, this is the one true story. This is the one great story I'm telling. Not, not these obscure Tibetan m members of, 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 of this particular lineage, which was really the, the these particular Tibetan masters were the, were the first ones who really got translated into uh, to English in many more lineages and things since then. But Francis has, has, has picked on, on these, these accounts that are, are full of uh, miraculous, hard to, hard to believe type stuff. Uh, of, of, uh, and is still Francis is presenting it to us as the story of the marvellousness of God in the world of the infinite coming down into the, the world of the particular, the concrete. The scandal of Francis's poem, because the scandal is the scandal of the concrete. Here he is claiming all the time that in this particular age, in this particular Parsi who, who, who lived in, in India, in, in these particular accounts, the infinite divine dwelt among men. And, of course, that, that's, that's part of the, of the reason why uh, Francis's poem seemed so naive and, and uh, callow to, to its original non barber readers. And, but he's able to, in the midst of dealing with mythical things, he's able to bring in the colloquial language. Our young dabbler who lives in terrible fright. Uh, in, in, yeah, he lives, he lives in a, a terrible fright. Dabbler in life, a terrible fright. 
as any user or manipulator or other human trafficker. Mm -hmm. Agree? Not, not, not just devil. Black magic he's talking mm -hmm. about here, but any treating of other human beings as an object for one's own actions to control. And spoken to by an angel, but of course we all get spoken to by bright presences. And the angel, of course, can speak to us all. If we're aware of how much the whole poem is about our own inner dramas, and not just taking higgledy-piggledy stories from various mythological accounts. Down the page at the bottom, uh, he's talking, in fact, about a miracle. Tilopa, sitting by a waterhole, picking the bones of fishes and stabbing his fingers, whereat the bones became reclothed with flesh, and the fishes plopped back into the waterhole. And Naropa flung himself into the dust and grabbed his feet. And, uh, of course, it's... We'll soon... He mentions how Jesus uh, was able to bring birds back, back to life. It's, it's not in the canonical Gospels, but it's, it's there in, in very old accounts of, of Jesus' life. The, the marvellous, the, the extraordinary, which people had as part of their whole imaginative world, uh, has now gone over the horizon for us. We're, we're living in a world of the physical and, and the predictable uh, and, and the scientific and, and ignoring this side of things. But you can see the, the sort of risk that Francis is, is taking. Okay, next we go on to uh, page 151. Oh no, 31, is it? Sorry. Page 31. Page 31. There's still one. Starting at the top. In January 1925, Barber settled in permanently. As far as permanently can be. <coughs> To a man to whom this too solid earth itself is but a moving shadow across the margin of existence bliss. In July, same year, he began that silence which he will not break till he speaks the word, which will release another Noah flood of destruction, of falseness, and of his and of his ark, refuge and sustaining and bliss transforming place of all that is true and useful and true and useful to good up up oh, oh, yeah up there to say so i think that it doesn't it doesn't seem a marvelous sort of thing that's happening here but in fact, the skill is a consummate one that's happening in a stanza like this. He's able to be, be telling, just in a very ordinary conversational fashion, a simple date. And then he qualifies it by, by saying how different time is for Baba, uh, and, and how illusory existence is that we normally take for granted. And then back to another date in July, and it's the silence, and then the Noah flood. The Noah flood, which most of us uh, have already dis firmly dismissed in our minds as, a, as an old furphy, as an old <coughs> story that no one <coughs> believes in anymore of, of Noah's ark and the animals two by two. Uh, but here's Francis using it. Uh, it's the, the Noah flood of destruction and, and falseness. 
is Ark the Refuge. It's Baba providing a refuge for our hearts as we face the inevitable, whether we're thinking in terms of an apocalypse here or the inevitable destruction of, of that time brings to all of us. His word provides an ark. So he's, he's rescuing something which is for most modern people a totally outmoded notion. He's rescuing it and putting it into his, his verse as a present experience for what we experience, have from, from Baba, the upbearing that we have from Baba. That same silence he returned to as was before he spoke the word, which was his question, Who am I? And birthed a world of universes and a universe of three worlds, spun them upon the axis of his own name, and groped his way through all the forms to man, to perfect manhood. The same silence, but now of knowledge bliss, pregnant equipoise of action. Again, I find this is an amazing condensation of imagery in a simple stanza. It's God returning, of course, to the same silence as before the creation, but with the answer to his question, who am I, there, from the whole progress, the birthing and the consummation of the whole universe, of the three worlds, the gross, subtle and, and mental worlds, spun them upon the axis of his own name. It's, it's, a, bit, it's a bit like that um, image that we have read out uh, this morning of um, Held in its hand is a ball and tossed in court and tossed by a man marking the pleasure of his marksmanship or a mirror in a lovely woman's hand. It's this feeling of, of creative freedom and, and lightness uh, behind the whole creative play that's been going on. And of course it's also the path that each of our individual souls is taking, the path to perfect manhood. The same silence that's there all the time for us, but which is now <laughs> pregnant with knowledge, bliss, pregnant equipoise of action. Only in Barbara, of course, is action the same as knowledge. Only, only there is that perfection attained. But for, or in other perfect masters. But for us, you know, just condensed in a, in a, a stanza, and, uh, yeah, so I'm going to have to uh, leave it. I was, I was going to do a whole lot of stuff on Book 5, but it's all up to you. Is it, Ross, are you doing Book 5? God willing. <laughs> <laughs> and the creek don't grow. Yes, the torch, the torch to Ross. Yeah, <laughs> because at all, but, yeah. And, okay, any, any particular? Jeff, I, I, um, was surprised from our Friday readings. I got the impression, and may be wrong, that Francis was saying, if you've come from sun, that's good. If you've come from moon, not so good. I got that, I, I thought that I heard that in at various points in reading mm -hmm. State of God on Friday. But I noticed on that, the first quote, the second line was, sun glory and moon gentleness, where they were actually given equal value. Yeah. So I just, um, do you mean? Oh, that's a really good point to bring up, Michael, because it, it shows mm -hmm. something of, 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 the, of the versatility of poetry, mm -hmm. that it, it doesn't have to have a cut mm -hmm. and, and dry, that equals that yeah. coming to it. And, and of course, he, Francis does take up 
the, the, the sun's masculine power and the moon's beauty of, of, of females, uh, as well as taking up the mutability of the sublunar sphere uh, as, as against the, the inevitable oneness of the sun track of the sun going through. So it, it, it's a multivalent symbol. And that's, that's the way poetry is working all the time, on, on, on shifting um, so that you're, you're intuitively feeling certain shifts and contradictions. And, and it's, not, it's not coming down to something that you can paraphrase uh, and make a doctrine out of. It'll never be able, just, 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 as, just as God speaks doesn't reduce in that sort of way. We can make... I mean, Barbara himself made diagrams out of God Speaks, but it, it doesn't reduce to diagrams and geometry. The, there's still the enormous music of, of the images and things in God Speaks as there is in the state of God. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. We, we, I noticed that too. Yeah. Apart from the musicality of the poetry, I feel all the duality, all the opposites, on the relative world are culminated in a God man. So Baba is a God man, is both sun glory and moon, gentleness, because he's, yeah. he's everything. Mm. So that's how I saw it. Yeah. God and man. Okay. okay. Well, <laughs> thank you, Jeff. Sun and moon, one of the really powerful metaphors.